how you commit your code, and then either you can have uh, Jenkins pull your SVN repository to say, well, every five minutes I'm going to see if there's a new commit, or you can have uh, automatic build hooks set up in your SVN properties, or uh, it doesn't need to be SVN, it could be any source control to kind of have these properties so that when that happens, it hits a URL, and then the Jenkins URL gets hit, and then it kicks off a build. Um, also, you can do testing along those same lines. Um, so you can have it run your test, whether it be you know, Cucumber, Eggplant, um, one of the IBM rational tools, um, anything like that, um, or just a general task runner. Maybe you have specific jobs. You're like, well, I want this to create a file that includes all my this, and just a place where you can kind of put code to run, and then you can do that. And there's also many more. Um, so you can go into Jenkins, and you can manually create a job. You can click on new item, and then pick what type of job it is, and you can, you can totally do that. Um, you can also use a copy existing item, which I've used in the past, which you can say, well, I have this other job that looks like this new job I want to create now. Um, that can be useful um, to get all your jobs. Or you can use the, the job DSL um, to, to create your jobs. Um, so the steps to do that is um, within Jenkins, uh, you go into Manage Jenkins, you install the job DSL plugin, and um, you want to create a freestyle, freestyle uh, project. Um, and, it's, and I think it's uh, the top one, actually. But um, so then you want to add um, a step uh, that's uh, process job DSLs is towards the bottom of the thing, and it'll be on the next slide. Um, and then you specify a script uh, directly within that job, uh, within uh, the job itself, or you can have it do a file system, look on the file system, either by you, know, you uh, connecting to a source control and pulling down the script, or it just might be there automatically, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. But um, anyway, this is the, the creation of the, the task that's supposed to create all the other jobs that you want. So um, the way we did it is you know, we create the one job, and then what it does is it pulls down uh, a couple scripts uh, from our source control, from SVN is what we use, and um, then it runs, it runs a job which, um, yeah, uh, this is a little hard to see. <laughs> So I apologize, but basically this is the, uh, basically you write your scripts in Groovy. Um, so we wrote a Groovy script that what it does is it, uh, it connects to Subversion and it does this SVN list um, of a specified uh, repository. So uh, in here what you do is you specify uh, your SVN, uh, this is really hard to read, I apologize, but uh, you specify your location of your SVN repo, and what, what the script does is it finds every, what it thinks is a project below that. It'll say, it'll just list, list all the files using the SVN list command that, that uh, is that command right there, and then everything that has a trunk, basically, it decides this is a project, this is something we want to create a job for. Um, so then as soon as it um, finds all the, all the uh, it does the SVN list and it finds all the trunks basically, then what it does is every file below the trunk, it creates a map, uh, a map of lists where the key is the, the trunk location and the, the rest of the map is a list of all the files uh, contained below that trunk location. And then uh, what it does is um, it tries to get the what types of jobs um, we want to create for that. Because say, for instance, if it's a Maven project, we, want, we might want to just simply do a Maven build uh, on some of them. Say it's a shared component, uh, we might want to do a Maven build. And then you might want to split off your Maven deploy to a different job. Um, say you want to uh, have a different job for testing, you might you know, create your Maven job and then your testing job. Um, different types of testing. Maybe you want to do a Cucumber one and a Gatling or a PyTest one. Uh, you can create all sorts of different jobs. And basically what 
that's what that part of it does. It's, a, it's creating a set of which jobs that it wants to create. Um, and then um, it iterates through the name, names of the jobs that it wants to create. And then it calls upon this. Uh, it's just the create new job. And it, it goes to uh, different scripts where, um, and this is where the job DSL comes into play. Um, and it's also equally as unreadable. But um, the idea is, is that um, you want to create a Maven. For this example, it's a Maven job. And then you can specify you know, what, what shows up in the description, um, what kind of log rotation you want to do, the source control. Just basically, it's giving you a language to describe what you want uh, your Jenkins job to look, look like when all is said and done. It's kind of like going to that. Um, it's when you go to your Jenkins job normally, you might c click on configure, and then it shows you all these things, but in like a different form, of course. It, this is just what it's allowing you to select. And, uh, and we do some logic uh, if we want to create a Maven job versus if it's a shared component or not, because the way, uh, the way it happens, we want to build it differently if it's a shared component. Because for instance, if it's a shared component, we, we choose deploy instead of verify for the Maven. Uh, the Maven goal. Um, are there any questions about this, by the way? Um, I hope I'm not going. Is there a way to unit test your uh, stuff? To unit test these scripts? Yeah. Um, I wasn't able to find a good way to do that. Um, I, don't, I don't get to live in the groovy world as much as I would like to, so I'm not as familiar with Spock or any of the groovy <coughs> testing tools. Um, I mean, the the scan script is, that would be harder to test because it's just like, well, you, you build a command, then you run it, and uh, you, you get your output that way. But I definitely do like, like working with Groovy, but the, the testing was a little bit like, uncomfortable because I'm used to doing test-driven development. So I was like, well, I, I hope it works as much as I think it does. But so uh, building this. Yeah, and just kind of, you see in the jobs get created, then you click on, you go to the job and click on configure, and you're like, well, OK, that looks like what I would expect. It felt a little bit kind of uneasy, I guess. I don't know. You'd rather have tests there to, to verify that things are happening exactly how they should, instead of just kind of like ad hoc. Yeah, this, this sounds great. Basically, I had a new project with some group repo. There's automatic Yeah, and, and that's how we kind of run it, is that we set the, the seed job or the job that you know creates everything else. We have it run once a day, and then anything that anything in our subversion tree that's just showed up that's that's recent that's is awesome. it's gonna it's gonna go and find that and say okay that's a project we're gonna want to create jobs for it. So uh, that's definitely useful for us. Um, let's see. Oh, the for reference, um, there's a great. Uh, there's a great site um, for this that goes through all the different commands and all the different ways that uh, you can use the DSL language to, um, to build your jobs. Um, so that's definitely really useful. Like when you type in Jenkins job DSL, it's like the fifth or sixth one, which um, that one's definitely the best, which makes it a little confusing that it's so far down on the page when you search for it. But, um, like over on the left pla left pane, it gives you like what you'd want to base how you'd want to uh, do it on a high level, and then you click on that, and then it gives you examples there on the right. It's a really useful useful page um, when going through and using the the job DSL. Um, and some gotchas we saw, and some of this has to do with the subversion side, and some of it has to do with the DSL side. Is um, when you when you go into your Jenkins instance and you say, well, I, I'm configuring this user that has credentials either to most likely to go to your subversion repository, uh, it's, it's useful that you give um, the ID of your, um, of your credentials that you're setting up as the same ID as the user ID. So then it's not 
because if you don't assign that, it'll give you some really long, unreadable string of what your uh, credentials ID will be, and then you'll want to use that in your um, you want to use that in your script because, like for instance, I think we have it here. Globals.credentials is what we set, and it's just simply the user ID instead of, like I say, this really long unreadable string. It's this DCMP10. Um, so let's see. Uh, that makes it a little easier to use. Um, so another thing that happened was that the the child scripts that actually do the work to create the the Jenkins jobs itself is um, the first parameter is as I referred to it as DSL. But when I I had to pass in this as my first parameter when I called um, when I called this function because then it has a way to get to the what you really want it to do because then you do a, like a a DSL uh, you do a dsl.maven job right here. And that, um, that's the same as, as this right here, the maven job. Um, so this is actually the, similar to this, um, where it says dsl.maven job. It's just there's more things configured uh, than just the example here. Um, so we had a little bit of uh, growing pains with our SVN access where the first project I uh, kind of implemented this on, our, our application ID, our ID that's just uh, usable by everyone, had SVN write access. So when we wanted to create a new job and then create build hooks for it, so that when you checked in code for that, um, for that SVN, that project, then it would automatically pick things up and you wouldn't have to do like the every five minute polling to see if you know the SVN tree was updated, um, that our application ID had had the proper, um, I guess, rights to physically write to the SVN access. So that made it uh, easier. But then when I, I tried to implement this on a different project, we didn't have an application ID that had SVN write access. So we kind of had to go through that. And the way we, and I had to work with our um, information assurance group. And what we ended up with is that, OK, well, if you run the job automatically, it's not going to have any credentials that can even get close to writing to SVN. But if you kick off the job manually, then Jenkins is, you set up, uh, I don't think I have a screenshot for it, but you can set up Jenkins to ask for a couple parameters. And it'll say, well, what's your username? What's your password? And it'll ask you for that. So then the user just simply, uh, types in his or her credentials, so then you can get the SVN access to work. So that was kind of a, a discussion between uh, us and Inform Information Assurance to uh, kind of come to a middle ground to say, well, they're not mad about us using application IDs that have the right access because they want to have a little bit more, um, a little bit more view about who's using these application IDs. So that's kind of a thing that they're trying to get rid of. So that was a a bit of a thing is the SVN access. Oh, and also about the SVN with the adding the build hooks to the to the SVN properties is um, I assumed we could do like a remote property update and just you can use an SVN command to say, well, I want to update or add this property and you think all would be well. Well, uh, it can be up to your SVN administrator to either turn that on or turn that off and to either make it available or not. So with RSVN admin, admin, it was turned off. So what we had to do was we had to just check out that project to a temp directory and then update the, um, update the SVN properties locally and then just check it back in, which wasn't a huge deal, but it still just made for a little bit more, more work with that. Um, and another thing is that the Maven and release automation is not supported within the DSL, which kind of confuses me because it's super useful. Um, and, and that's if you guys use Maven. It's um, like for, for normally when we do work in Maven projects, we do work on the trunk. And then we tag, uh, tag the trunk and then um, have that be the release version. And then just uh, 
you know, do whatever release we want to with that. You know, we happen to use our, our change management part to, to do the release. But the point is, is that normally you want to increment the trunk version by one, uh, trunk maven version by one, and then uh, tag off the, the new uh, release version into a, a tags uh, on subversion. And anyway, the maven release does all that, but there's not, uh, it doesn't support that within the DSL plugin. So that was a little bit of a thing. Um, as a gotcha. Um, so in summary, um, there's a couple things that this really helps with, is that um, this, like, this helps build many, many uh, jobs for a project. So if you're just starting a project and you're like, well, there's going to be a lot of things we're building and a lot of projects within our main project, um, it can help you build all those. Um, it gives you a, a definite consistency because just by definition, you know, it's building them all the same way. Uh, you have consistency across the board. There aren't a whole, whole bunch of questions about, well, this works one way over here, but this different way over here. So the consistency is definitely a good thing. Um, and then if you decide that you want to update your jobs, then updating them is just updating the script and then running the script, and then it'll uh, update them all the same way, obviously. Um, Oh, and another gotcha I didn't have on here is that it's kind of a known that you, if you're going this direction and you're automatically building your jobs every night and making sure they're what they should be, um, if users go in and try to configure the jobs individually and make changes to them and expect those to stay, uh, that's kind of a false expectation because the, the DSL is going to come around nightly and going to... Um, kind of undo any, any changes they made. They should at least work with the script itself and then run the script and then change the jobs that way. Um, are there any questions? You typically inject your DSL oh, code into the same repo as for the project. Yeah. Uh, the way it started is uh, I was doing this on one project and it just was checked into a location uh, within the same tree, just kind of alongside the base location that was given. So like you'd have the base location given and then the, all the scripts. We had like seven scripts uh, alongside that. But as we were using that for different projects, we just said, OK, take all these files. We'll give you all the files, all the scripts, and then you can customize those uh, for whatever you need. We didn't try to say, we'll use our scripts, and then there'd be all this big question about, well, we want our Maven jobs to be built a certain way. And then, you know, there, it was just like handing the scripts, change them as you will. Uh, did that answer your question? Yeah, so you do keep it in the same tree? Mm hmm okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Maven part. Uh, the, does it support? OK, so I'm a little confused about that. Is it just making calls to? The system of Maven and you're passing parameters, right? It's not doing that. You said it wasn't supported, the, the Maven. Uh, the release part is that, wasn't. Is that a plugin thing for Maven or is that? Yeah, it's a it's a the Maven release plugins an Apache thing that uh, it's just like commands within Maven. So is it just that the DSL hasn't been updated to include those things? Yeah. Okay. It just hasn't been updated to include that part of, of what Maven does. It'll still, oh, sorry. What about, um, uh, I was just trying to you use Gradle. Does it support Gradle? I, I think it does. I don't know. Um, I yeah, um, that's odd. Um, my clicker doesn't work anymore. No. Stop working? Yeah. It, the clicker stopped working. Um, but yeah, and you can go to that site that, that was in the slides, and because they have all sorts of different uh, source control. It's not just SVN. It's got Git and, and other things as well, on top of the fact that it has other build tools, too. It isn't just Maven. Because we do a lot of JavaScript jobs, too, uh, using this um, as well. So it doesn't have to be just like you know, Maven and Subversion. Are there any other questions? 
do you run this only on your own machine for like development, or is it also Jenkins help you with uh, uh, reference build for everybody's contributions? Um, it's a shared thing. Like everybody on the project will use the same Jenkins machine. So do you have it so that if you make some small change before you check it in to uh, Subversion, push it up to the server, that it'll then pick up on that and build on your own box automatically? No, it, it so won't. It's it, only on the server? Yeah, okay. it, it won't interface with your own machine. Okay. Uh, like that's up to you to make the build and make sure the build is cool before you commit it. And when you commit it, then Jenkins picks that up from the SVN build hook, gotcha. the, the property that you set. You basically set the URL um, in the SVN property, and then uh, it, hits a, an S, it hits a Jenkins URL, and then it kicks off the build right there. Yeah, it cascades a little bit. Alright, I think that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>